Olivia Rotilia. Beautiful. Can't wait to see what's going on. It's a little louder. I can't wait to see what's going on. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're at Reptilia, and um, there's a party going on through here. So we're just gonna look around, and then we're gonna get a behind-the-scenes tour. So stay tuned. Closer to 20, maybe even more in captivity. But uh, 16, 18 feet in the wild, pretty good. So they're big boys. They can, they can eat. <laughs> so it's behind the scenes of reptilia. Yeah. So come on back. Let's check out who we've got and we'll go say hi to Tank. Okay. And we actually have some of our native Ontario turtles back here as well. So we've got a couple of little painted turtles. We've got one of our blanding turtles in the middle there, along with one of our spotted turtles. These guys act as our sort of ambassadors for our Ontario species. Mm. And again, they were all rescued, so they were unable to be returned to the wild. So they come here and they get to teach people all about reptiles. Awesome. Yeah. Think about that. Uh, I think it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> probably can't see too too much but one guy this did the, come on out <laughs> this is the uh cane toads. cane toads yeah yeah let's see if we can get this guy to come on and say hello hello buddy there we go so as i'm holding him he's probably gonna show off some of his defensive behaviors we can see right away that he's inflated himself up to a pretty good size. So he's trying to make himself look big and intimidating, trying to tell me not to eat him. 
He <laughs> may start peeing at any time or pooping to tell me again that he's not particularly appetizing. And once he's figured out that I'm not going to eat him, he might think that I'm another male and I might be thinking he's a female. And if that's the case, he's going to start chirping to say that, nope, he's a boy, please leave me alone. <laughs> but you can see those nice big poison glands just up behind his eyes here. If he was secreting the poison, you'd see a little bit of a milky fluid coming out from those pores. Mm -hmm. But right now he's pretty calm other than thinking that maybe I think he's a snack. <laughs> yeah, these are really cool. We've seen some pretty big ones uh, around. This, these are fun. It's fun to see them puff up. Oh yeah. I don't think I've ever seen one puff up like <laughs> this. This is. It's pretty dramatic. <laughs> yeah. And as soon as he kind of pops back down, it let deflates. All <laughs> that air out like a nice balloon. <laughs> Anybody? So funny. Get on me real quick. So I just want a quick shout out to uh, Rob. Uh, this is what he, one of the tortoises that uh, this is what your guy can get to. So I think uh, <laughs> I uh, bought you that one just a couple years ago. And uh, so this is what you need to be looking forward to. And believe it or not, he's actually only about 17 years old. No way. Yep, he's still a pretty young guy. No way. <laughs> He's huge for 17. Yeah, so again, he was one of our rescues. So he uh, came to us already uh, a good size, not you know terribly huge. Mm -hmm. You can break those up if you want, sure. and offer them one by one. <laughs> hey, you, uh... Watch your fingers, because he certainly has a pretty strong bite. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so Tank here is a pretty cool dude. He's currently around 160 pounds. Uh, he could still get a little bit bigger considering he is still you don't pretty want young. The, uh, oh yeah, he lost the leafy part. He's a smart guy. Give him the dandelions, he gets collar He's coming for him. I know. And believe it or not, he used to be able to fit in that cave there. <laughs> That's unbelievable that he's only 17. Yeah. And I think we've had him <laughs> since he was about five years old. Wow, you guys have had him for a while. Yeah, he's been one of our no special guys. Hey, <laughs> sir. I don't have anything, it's over here. You can fit. <laughs> it's over that way. Over that way. Over there. Now you can check out that nice hard shell. Get a little scratch on his head, he loves. He's pretty smart. We sometimes will hide his food or we'll hang it up for him and he figures it out pretty darn quick. <laughs> <laughs> so how much do these guys eat? Uh, so the hay that we put down, he clears up usually within a couple of days or so. And then we'll give him fresh greens uh, every other day essentially, along with a mix <laughs> of things like squash, apples. Uh, he can definitely eat an entire pumpkin on his own. That's what he gets <laughs> at Halloween. That's his favorite. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm just tearing into him, huh? Yeah. I'm just gonna duck behind you for a second. Sure. Here. Grab his collars. <laughs> Dog, stick your hand in here. Get it right in the, right in there. <laughs> These things are awesome. Yeah, they're very strong. I've seen. Uh, 
smaller ones basically walking on top of each other with yeah. no trouble whatsoever. Yeah. We're going in to see a water monitor. Hey, bud. Yeah. Um, so probably you're okay there, but if you wanted to kind of come around this side too, you can give him a pet. Uh, I'll kind of hang out by his head and just make sure that he's being a good boy. But this is Dad, and Dad is one of our Asian water monitors. You can just give him a pet right on his back there. So as his name suggests, he was a father, so he did uh, have some babies while he's been here at Reptilia. Oh, yeah. uh, we still have one of his sons up at the front of our zoo, and then another one over at our Whitby location. That's awesome. Yeah. We like these guys a lot. So tell us about this enclosure a bit. I know that it's uh, a lot going on on the outside of this. Yeah, so these guys are native to Southeast Asia where uh, unfortunately deforestation is kind of a major issue. So we've sort of set up his enclosure to give a story about deforestation, uh, particularly with the Asian water monitors because they're known for being so bold and for not being particularly afraid of humans. Uh, they often do kind of wander into deforestation camps and will raid the garbages and they'll raid the workers' lunches and see what they can find, whether it's fish or whatever meat they happen to have. They're pretty content with it regardless. They're kind of like the raccoons of Southeast Asia. Yeah. Deforestation is a big problem. That's a barrel of rocks. <laughs> this handsome oh, guy yeah. is Cameron. Hi, Cameron. You can give him a pet. He's pretty friendly. What do you think? <laughs> Are we buddies? So he's our sailfin lizard here. And uh, my favorite thing about him is what his favorite food is. So like all of the sailfins, you know, he'll eat a mix of veggies and fruit and bugs and fish and basically whatever we've got on hand. But Cameron's favorite food is apples. He really? loves apples to the point where if we stick a whole apple in there, he'll chow down on it and chomp it all down with his little teeth. He gets very excited. This is tiny little smile, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, we can, that's a, look, at this, look at that smile. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. He likes to come out and explore too when we're doing our morning clean. We'll pop his door open, he'll hop right out and go for a little walk. Oh, yeah. Has a good old time. And of course, being a sail fin, he's got his lovely sail down his back. Mm -hmm. And then those really cool toes. Try and get him a light there so you can see them. So how he's got these extra scales down the sides. So when he's a baby, that would help him run across the surface of the water. But as an adult, it's thought that it actually helps them run across the surface of mud. So they live in areas where it gets fairly muddy, fairly swampy, and mm -hmm. it gives them a fast getaway to get across the surface without sinking down. And he likes to do the thing that's sort of classic for a lot of the uh, water dragons, things like the Chinese water dragon and the sail fins, where he'll be up on a high branch and if he gets a little bit startled or excited about something, he will just drop straight down. <laughs> and it scares us every single time, but he's fine. He bounces right back up and continues to be in himself. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I finally wake him up, huh? What is a girl? So this is Kiva. Hi. And Kiva is our African gray parrot. Uh, she's about 12 years old, and again, she was a rescue. So she's been with us for a little while now. And a lot of people ask us why we have a bird at a reptile zoo. Are you going to go now? Yeah, now you're going to go. There you go. Um, <laughs> and the answer to that is basically birds are reptiles too. So if we follow the fossil record as well as DNA evidence, we can see that parrots and birds in general are descendant from dinosaurs, especially the raptor side of dinosaurs. And they just became very, very highly specialized towards flight. 
but when we look at their skeletons and we look at features like their feet and their organs, you can really see that similarity between them and the rest of the reptiles. So Kiva, step up. There's a good girl. I will worry you, she's not a big fan of pets, but as long as you're just sort of standing there, she's more We used more than to uh, breed these when I was younger. <laughs> so I just wanted to say, um, Harrison and Joel from State 48, look, uh, we have birds too. <laughs> okay, so it's not ours, but you know, <laughs> we're okay with birds. We're just visiting. Harrison just Wang and Joel from State 48. We got your bird right here. <laughs> That's awesome. they're, they're so great. Cotton mouth shedding. Cool, and I'm shedding at the same time. That one's got a shadow on their nose, too. Good job, boys. Don't Is that shed. something you see every day? So, Reptilia, um, it's a really cool reptile zoo, but they keep the lights very dim, and now this is after hours, so a bunch of uh, animals are switching over to their nighttime, uh, their nighttime routine. So a lot of the lights are going off and things like that. It looks really great for us. It might be a little bit hard to see, but this is definitely a really cool place to check out. So if you're in the area, check it out. So we'll give you guys a link in the description below and uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about, you know, what else is going on at the end of this video. Great place to support. Mm, look at you. Little rattlesnake. system under here you can't really see it from here but she's pulling them out of a rack system and all the rack bins have locks on um, this is a great way for the public to come and see these without actually being in any danger He's just turned 57 this year. 57. 57. And uh, we've had him for about 20 ish, 25 years or so, so about half of his life. Uh, him and his partner over there came to us from a leather farm in South Africa. So they came wow. all the way from Africa to join us. And uh, his partner over there, we can go around and check her out a little bit closer. So that's Nandi there. And uh, Nandi is a little bit younger. She is not quite 40 years old and uh, definitely a lot smaller. So how much would you guys think that they weigh? Together? Uh, separately. <laughs> I bet she's 
250 pounds, and he's like 480, 500 pounds. You're very far off. Wow. So she is probably close to about 800 pounds. Wow. And, uh, what? In Mostly Duna, underneath of the water? Yes. So in Duna over there is about 1,200 pounds. And, yeah, ben, uh, why are you so stupid? Actually, if you look up yeah, above the exhibit, the those were the crates <laughs> that they actually shipped in. <coughs> oh, wow. Uh, which is actually how we got their weights initially, is that we knew their shipping weight. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, they're pretty special to us. They're not... Uh, Actually, some of the pickier animals we have here, they basically will eat any kind of meat that we offer to them, but they really don't like having fur in their mouth. <laughs> not sure why, so... Who does? Uh, I mean, really. Yeah, it's not particularly tasty, so they definitely like when we skin things, so we'll <laughs> offer them either skinned or plucked food, and then we'll also give them things like fish, uh, we've given them lobster, crab, all kinds of things. Eating well. Uh, usually for their birthdays, we do try to make a big deal of it. So this past uh, birthday for Induna in October for 57, he got a bunch of whole mackerels. He got uh, some chicken. We had some turkey, a whole bunch of different things. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool you guys do that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and we do go right in with them. We're not just tossing the food <laughs> overhead. We go up on the beach there and they're smart enough that they know that their job is to stay in the water and they get fed in the water mm -hmm. and uh, they do respond to their names. So we call them one at a time to come up and get their meal and they only get it if they're being polite. So it uh, works out pretty well for all of us. That's great. Yeah. So you, you have a pretty awesome uh, set up here and it's it's beautiful really Thank there's you. the enclosures are, are very large um there's a lot here we didn't show uh half of it probably um there's a bunch of stuff as we were walking around there I'm like oh man i wish we could see this more i wish i could you know but uh so most of these animals are rescues, right? Yeah, about uh, 75 to 80% of them were rescues. So okay. they were either uh, pets that couldn't be looked after anymore or were found in sort of strange circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, even some of our venomous guys, we had a call from, uh, I believe it was the police at the time. They uh, were called to deal with the situation and there was a viper in the person's apartment building so we had to come and retrieve it mm. we've uh, retrieved a caiman from high park that was just dumped <laughs> into the pond there so so it does happen it does happen <laughs> occasionally uh but yeah so we definitely do have these sort of weird situations and then the remaining small percentage are from other zoos mm. uh, or sort of private collections that we've got them from so that's yeah. really cool so I just want to do a quick plug. Now we're going to put your information below. I was talking about this earlier yeah. um, when you were walking around with the, the venomous, but we'll put your information below. So can people donate money here? Can they, or just come out and show? Cause there's a lot of our people that watch aren't from this area. Yeah. So you guys are right in Toronto. You guys, you have two locations now, right? Yep. So we have our Vaughn location just north of Toronto. And then we have our Whitby location just east of Toronto and right. kind of keep an eye out because we're hoping to open up in some other places fairly soon. That's great. Yeah. That'd be awesome. So you guys can donate, you know, on their website, right? Yeah. You can check out our website. It's got kind of all of the information there. Mm -hmm. We're also always happy to have visitors from yep. all over the place. We get lots of out of town visitors and uh, we have a lot of regulars too that yeah. just come out every Saturday and have a good time. That's great. Yeah. So yeah, it's a really great setup and we really appreciate you letting us, you know, come in and invade the space and video and just you showing us behind the scenes and jump in with some of the animals. It was really great. Well, really appreciate I'm glad it. you guys enjoyed yourself. We're always happy to have some visitors here. Good. Thank you very much. So uh, yeah, make sure you guys like this video if you did and subscribe to us. Check these guys out and uh, you know, hopefully if you guys are in the Toronto area, you can come check it out because I know a lot of people that are watching are reptile people and this is a great place to come see some really awesome reptiles. I mean, a Nile crack, what are you going to, you know, what are you going to do? Like, yeah. And actually the first Sunday of every month, you can even see them eat, which is a pretty fun time. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Ben? Uh-huh. Did you lose your car keys? No, no, no. I once in Florida I was I was taught how to sex one of these things. It's not through the mouth. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Wait, you're filming? <laughs> no. Oh, uh, Ryan was just uh, I wanted to film you climbing into this thing. 
wanted to film it because you know you'll probably fall or whatever. And <laughs> just kidding. All right. There we go. We're so All right, Ryan. This is our next project. Hey, Ryan. I'm in a zoo enclosure. Look at me. <laughs> It's been a long time coming. These are, ah, just kidding. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. Do you think people would pay to see me? I mean, maybe. It's, uh, <laughs> you might need a little bit more enrichment. You know, maybe it's a desk, true. a computer, or something what? to keep you occupied. And this is a human. He's a weirdo. We're going to install a cubicle for you so you feel at home. Great. Thank you. Unless you're a free range kind of human. And then, you know. <laughs> some days, but some days not, for sure. You smell mm. free range sometimes. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. So usually she likes to do that first. That's why we kind of wait. You bet. She looks like she's trying. You trying? You trying to push oh, it? Oh, she's trying. You can do it. You can do it. That's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> Dance. You can do it! Crazy! There you go! <laughs> Good girl! Good girl! 